Okay. Um, if people need to go, they can go, and we're just going to hang out for another twenty minutes, just yeah. like chatting. Taking any questions? So yeah, yeah, let's open it. Let's open it up to more uh, more general stuff. More general so questions. Yeah, I'm really impressed. Just... Everyone's obviously, except for Noel, everyone's basically stayed for the for the duration. So everyone's been very committed. Yay. And um, thanks, everybody. Yeah. And yeah, great. It's great to see so much engagement. Um, so yes. I'm going to ask everyone a question in a bit, but first, does anyone have anything at all about anything in the world they'd like to ask us? I'm, I'm keeping my eyes on the chat box. Let's see. <laughs> if you want to come on camera, we can even unmute you and yep. let you talk or you can chat. I need to drink again. Hang on. Water is king. Yes. Cool. No one has any questions, really? I don't believe you. Isn't there something you've always wanted to ask Gabriel that you just never, that you were just too shy to ask? <laughs> Looks like no. Well, oh, here we go. Caught off guard. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're just, we're just waiting for you, feeling. waiting for you to come up with a good question. Where did yeah. you like, where did you learn to draw or why did you start using drawings in your teaching? That's a good question. Um, well, I, I don't think I can draw. <laughs> okay. Like, um, but I think that's the thing. Like, um, I don't, I mean, I, yeah, I try to draw like properly sometimes, but um, I think it's important to be able to draw simply, um, not actually mm. drawing. Like when you're drawing something, if you're teaching something or showing something, it's the simpler, the better, I think. Mm. So. Yeah, and that's the challenge. I think being, okay, let's say I can draw, but being a good drawer for educational purposes requires not being a good drawer, but being able to illustrate the point as clearly as possible. Okay, yeah. all right, that's good. Yeah. So it's simple, so it doesn't have to be like super artistic or... Yeah, okay. and I just like really a very visual person. I always visualize stuff a lot. So it just was natural for me when I'm explaining something in a blog post or even in a lesson. Yeah, just show it. Yes. Show, don't tell. Yeah, that is totally, I can agree on that. Um, oh, we got some nice comments. Uh, Altiari is saying, yes, please, just please make more of such sessions. Well, there's been such a triumph today that I think we will definitely do this again. You're sold on the concept. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's a question here. Until when do I have to continue studying? I feel like saying until I say stop. <laughs> no, but I, I think that's an interesting question because like, are you ever really done? So like, is, is there really an end point? I don't know. I don't think so. I don't I think, think there is. I think I'm you always learning. keep going. There's always more to learn. There's always more to learn. And that can be interpreted in a good way or a bad way. Like with me, with French, there's, al there's always an opportunity to realize that you've been pronouncing something wrong for 10 years or um, that you, there's a new word that you can learn uh, or something or something like this. So um, I think also one more, I'd just like to add one point to that as well, yeah. is that, yeah, if you're thinking about learning English being a fixed thing with an end point, it might be very bad for your motivation. Um, you should, like Cara says, sort of remember that it just goes on forever and that's okay. That's a good thing because learning is fantastic. It's yeah. wonderful to learn it's stuff. It's just having um, like the thing that motivates you to keep coming back. I think that's really important, whether it's movies or podcasts or reading books in English or something, you know, something that gets you hooked. Um, I like the next question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah could you draw something you could actually you could use oh okay I was going to say you could use the um there's the whiteboard on zoom but that's probably quite hard to draw on the computer but yeah if you draw um you could draw this webinar right now this class <laughs> just a <laughs> okay. lot of squares I like this but we're definitely definitely going to need someone to suggest what to draw what, what am I going to draw yeah that'll make it easier Anyone got any ideas? What, so who, who, who suggested it? Uh, Ramon. Ramon. What, what should I draw, Ramon? I've already got something that I, I was using in my last lesson. It's a, it's a tower in Berlin. There we go. Oh, there you go. Oh, that, oh yeah, that's on all the photos of Berlin. That's quite famous. Yeah. Um, well, there you go. You, you just drew something. 
Well, yeah, but that was from yesterday. Okay, okay. I'm going to draw something. What should I draw? I'll, oh, Cara, okay, I'll give you, I want you to draw a horse and I'm going to continue like answering oh, questions while you draw okay. that. I'm sorry, that's so random. Um, no, no, I like it actually. <laughs> Cordy asks, how do you go beyond proficiency? What's beyond proficiency? Like, because I think if you achieve proficiency as a non-native speaker, then that's really... Because <laughs> like, advanced proficiency, David like, Crystal. Yeah, pro- like I consider myself proficient in French and it's still not perfect, but it's like really, really, really good. Like, um, I don't think you need to go beyond proficiency. I just think you need to, but if you're back living in Spain, I just think, again, you need that thing that keeps you in contact with English every day, whatever it is, whether it's listening to the radio, listening to podcasts, reading books, keep the keep the the connection going. Oh, I like that, Chrissy. Yeah, there's no end point. You fall in love with the language and keep going. Yes, that summarizes what I'm trying to say. So much better. I'm really sorry, Cara. I didn't do a horse. I did a unicorn. Oh. Is it a unicorn? It's a unicorn. Oh, I love it. Hey, but right. very very small horn. We should do a giveaway of that if you want to win <laughs> this picture. I, I'll photograph it and send send it to you. Send it to you. Email. Wow. Should I do that? I'm going to put the random generator on again, and if if <laughs> you can send that person the, the sixty five. Uh, so this unicorn now belongs to. Do we have Olena? I don't think we do. Only people who aren't okay. here win. Yeah, we're going to go the, for the some. The key to winning is to not be here. <laughs> I'm going to try again. 82 is uh, Bupendra. Is that person here? I don't, don't see a Bupendra. Okay, one one more. Otherwise, I keep the unicorn. <laughs> 76. Feels like we just had 76. Uh, Sveta Raduski. Is Sveta here? Unicorn's okay, mine. Like the <laughs> unicorn is the yours. Unicorn. No. Okay, yeah. I'm just looking at um, Mar teacher says, can you recommend any website to make online lessons more enjoyable, games, quizzes, etc.? Um, well, what I do is I teach with movies, and that way I'm never bored, and neither are my students because we just hang out and talk about movies. Um, and I don't re- so I don't really use any of like the sort of the websites that are designed for teachers because I just don't need them. But I don't don't know, Gabriel. Can you think of any? Oh, I'm good. I, I think I mistook the question. Was it? I've lost it now. It's from one twelve p.m. Mar teacher. Mm-hmm. Um, but because so, someone someone recommended Word Wall, I don't know that one. But if it's good, then then good. Um, oh yeah, oh, here it is. Website to make online lessons. Oh, sorry, no. Um, although I mean it, it might it might help. I've got a blog post from back in 2018 about uh, websites for students to learn, but you can probably use some of these to as, adapt as a teacher, your lessons. Yeah. So yeah, um, I've just sent a link on the on the chat. Seven awesome. websites you will love. Okay, nice. and there were some in earlier. We posted that um, blog post about interactive transcripts, and there's also some ideas in there fun websites cool websites um there's a question for you from mm-hmm. alf gabriel oh, cool. about grammar yes. so i'll let you answer that we give a lot of advice on grammar but sometimes it's difficult to use in a casual conversation do you have some tips to improve your our grammar in a casual conversation or in a stressful context oh i like the stressful context yeah because i relate to that um yes well i mean i think the key if you want to, I mean, grammar is just a tool. It's just a little stepping stone to helping you get a better understanding of what's going on with the language. But uh, we talked earlier about chunks and trying, I think when you're trying to sort of recall phrases or express yourself or, you know, speak in English, um, don't worry about the grammar. Don't worry about the tenses. Um, They're really not that important. Most whatever kind of is is very difficult to make a mistake a grammatical mistake in English that will ruin the meaning of what you're saying um I think it's probably more productive to try and remember sort of the chunks that we were talking about earlier like phrases like would you like a cup of coffee have mm. you ever have you ever eaten sushi chunks um, for the win yes chunks for the win yes I like that um so that's yeah a chunk. <laughs> that's a chunk yeah um so when you're like suffering in a stressful context, don't think about 
past, present or future or present perfect or past perfect or continuous or what's going on. Don't think about that stuff. Just try to sort of, um, and it's easy to say, but this, take, this comes with practice. Try to recall the right phrase for that situation because everything is really just a big collection of phrases. That is that is good. That is good advice. Because yeah, because sometimes the grammar it can feel like you're trying to do like a mathematical equation in your head when you speak, and which is not. That's not actually how native speakers use grammar. You know this from your own language. It's just that you've internalized a lot of stuff, and uh, then you're just able to select the right, the right ones when you when you need them. Um, yes, bringing up like phrases. Yeah, totally. Is is a much more natural and much easier once you get used to it. Exactly. Yeah. But I think that's also why it helps to be able to understand things like people talking fast in movies, because then you... It's all related to that yeah. as well. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Well, this is why I like the focus on, like, instead of just kind of vaguely understanding stuff 50%, if you really dig in and try to understand more, then you'll actually be picking up chunks, and then that's how you improve your, your English. And you learn it all in context, and you get to watch a movie, so really... Yeah. And if you're interested in the whole chunks thing, um, I think the next podcast, which we're um, putting out next week, will is actually talking about this. So, um, yeah, watch out for that. And I'll be talking more about using chunks. Awesome. Welcome All to the right. Podcast. Yeah. There's another couple of the questions. Um, ju, 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 ju. Where is it? Al Tiari says, I would also ask about cognitive burden. So when non-native speakers, when you speak with native speakers and you get really tired and you kind of just mm. withdraw from the conversation. Yeah, yeah. Mm, yeah that's that's really, that's a really good point. Yeah. I know um, this feeling. Yeah. Yeah. Because I think we've, we, all, we've all had that. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. But that's where I found like when I first arrived in France, I would I would sometimes just not worry about always trying to speak and practice my speaking and uh, I would some I would sometimes consciously withdraw and just kind of focus on listening and just see if I could like spot any chunks or just notice how proficient speakers interact and that can take the pressure off you because uh, also I think when you're a foreigner sometimes like people aren't they aren't kind of relying on you to speak. They know that you might be a bit more quiet. And these are really good times for just observing mm. um, as much as as much as you can. Um, but but yeah, but sometimes you may also have to say to the native speakers, like, I'm tired, or what the hell are you talking yeah. about? Or, you know, like sometimes you do have to unfortunately ask for for help and just let it be known that you're not you're not following okay. Like that's totally fine. Like people need to be educated about um how exhausting it is especially if they're english native speakers and they don't speak other languages like they have no, they're just ignorant like it's not it's nothing against you it's just that they are actually ignorant it's kind so. of their fault yeah um, it's, so, it's, it's 100% their fault i but. totally agree yeah um but yeah um i think yeah exactly and also just to say i'm tired but i'm listening yeah and that's cool that's cool that's you're totally cool excluded yeah um, I really like this question from Oksana. Thank you for adding the cue, Oksana. Um, <laughs> so some friends are afraid of saying something that may also have an indecent meaning. Like um, she so there was an example with a native speaker waiting downstairs and a friend of mine getting ready to meet him said, one moment I'm coming, he was corrected and felt embarrassed. Well, I just <laughs> want to say that native speaker was behaving really badly because like we do say that and it doesn't- say I'm coming, yeah. It doesn't necessarily have like a, a bad connotation unless you're like, 12 years old or mentally 12 years old and you think mm -hmm. it's funny because there could be a sexual meaning but we say that we it's a really good that. example of context here isn't it like how that one phrase can have completely different meaning based on the context yeah. but that was fine for this context yeah if you're coming downstairs it's, i'm coming it's fine yeah again but, that's yeah sorry mm, no no sorry i'm, I'm, I'm interrupting no, it's just the native speaker behaving badly and just trying yeah. to make you feel embarrassed or you make your friend feel embarrassed um, yeah, I mean, if something is really indecent, people will tell will probably tell you if you said something that was really rude. Like, I think this person was just maybe making a joke of the situation that maybe, you know yeah. that that particular expression has a double meaning. But in this context, there was no like 
suggestive yeah. meaning. I think that that's a naughty native speaker there. Yeah. Um, bad native speaker. Bad native speaker. So yeah, and but generally speaking, that is kind of an issue, right? Sometimes we're afraid of um, saying the wrong thing. I mean, I avoided the word uncle in Turkish when I was learning Turkish because it's just too close to something else. Um, but you just, yeah, you just got to, you've just got to um, be confident enough with the language. And if you make the mistake, you know, it's not the end of the world. And people are generally more sympathetic. They know that you're learning a language and it's, it's okay to make, to make a so, Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Um, so it helps. Just, Remember yeah, I hope, that, I hope that helps. I hope that's not like a cop out, but that, like a sort of we're avoiding the question. But um, <laughs> I'm just grabbing something off my blog for Analia Sanchez, can... which is so if you want to learn how to use interactive video transcripts on YouTube, I've just put the link to my blog post um, in the chat. And that is a blog post that I updated recently. It was an old post, but I updated it and it's got a video in it and it's got a full explanation. and. Yeah, that's got everything you need um, to find interactive transcripts on YouTube. Um, okay, so um, we've answered that yeah, yeah, one. Yeah. yeah. Is there anything else? And then Chris gave some awesome resources for online lessons. Oh, we missed uh, something from Ramon, and I think he makes a very, very good point. Yeah, I would. I'm sold on that, Ramon. You yeah. should. You should get the unicorn. Yeah, for sure. All right. So um, I've I've added. I've added a, a, a little dedication. Um, I'll I'll send it I'll send it over, Ramon. It's your unit. You, you get the unicorn, Ramon's unicorn. It shall forever be known as Ramon's unicorn. And I, I asked for a horse, and we got a unicorn. Well, it's yeah. actually better, isn't it, it's than a an horse? Upgrade. I'm adding an ear. Sorry, sorry, Karen. <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. Okay, we've got five minutes, so we could maybe mm -hmm. take like. Oh yeah, didn't you say, Gabriel? You said that we should crowdsource some ideas for movies and TV yes. shows. Yeah. So, so let's sorry do that if, with the last yeah. five minutes. So sorry if um, we didn't get to answer all the questions here. It's really nice reading this chat. Um, everyone's been so lovely. And one question for everyone: um, Do have you ever watched a film in English? that really, really like got like hit you and really helped you with your English. Like the level was perfect. The engagement was perfect. You watched the film and you understood things well. And it was a very, and you learned a lot of like new phrases and new chunks. Have you ever, have you got a film like that? The perfect film that really perfect worked film. for you? Or, yeah. or TV series that you want to recommend for English learners? I want to say it's like a unicorn, this movie, that's perfectly understandable even for people learning English. The perfect, yeah, perfect unicorn. Um, Give us your well, suggestions if you if you have them. I'm trying to think of anything, because I'm not a big I, film person, I'm more of a TV person. You're more so of a TV person, any, yeah. Any examples. Um, yes, I mean, yes. Oh, here we go. King, I love King Speaks. Oh, is that the, oh, that's the, about the king, the, the British king who had a speech problem, speech uh, impediment. The king's speech. The king's speech, yes. Yeah. George II? I don't know. Hordy recommends Father Ted. Wow, that is super challenging. I used to love Father Ted when oh, I was I a love kid. Oh, I Father Ted. Yes. So funny. So, so girls, funny. Girls, girls. Um, oh, Gruffalo, it's for kids. I don't know this one. I guess, Cara, you might know it. I don't know, but I think I think it's based on a book. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so the King's Speech, Father Ted, if you want to understand Irish accents, Airplane. Comedy. Oh, Sense and Sensibility from Marianne. Marianne is a character in Sense and Sensibility. We just watched this in the movie club with my students, Sense and Sensibility. Yes, it's a lovely movie. Oh. Um, it is fairly easy to understand, although I suppose the language is a bit old fashioned. That's old -fashioned. the only kind of downside. Mm -hmm. But it's really good for discussion because um, we can still relate to a lot of things that happen because it is ultimately a love story. But there's also like heartbreak and then like happiness as well. Lovely film. It's um, one of Kate Winslet's first films. Isn't yeah, it? she's so like young in the film. Oh my god! Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I think she's playing a teenager, so that's mm -hmm. why. Yeah. Um, Big Bang Theory difficult. It depends. I mean, I suppose the difficulty in Big Bang Theory is some of the like academic language, but. I don't even know if I necessarily understand that very well. But then what's good about Big Bang Theory is that it's kind of always the same story every episode. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's the good thing about sitcoms. Um, English of English? What's that? I don't know. Someone's just written English of English. 
Okay. Um, oh, well, how, high society, kiss me, K on the town. And then oh, Poirot, Poirot, I guess is, uh, I love Poirot, the detective series. It's great. Bergerac and Midsummer Murders. Yeah. Well, that's quite, again, Midsummer Murders is basically like everyone in the same, this village gets murdered every week. So it's literally like the same, <laughs> the same story every, um, every episode. Awesome. Okay. Yeah, if you like detective series, they have quite the same formula. And then I think once you get used to some of the vocab that's specific to the police, you're probably okay, I think. I think Columbo is good for that because he's always, it's always the same kind of language in Columbo. Ah, and and everyone's, story. everyone's probably seen Columbo dubbed into their native language. I think mm. especially if you live maybe in France or Spain or countries like this, you've probably seen Columbo in your language. Oh my God. Columbo. Someone's wow. recommending, yeah, I love Columbo. Someone's recommending it. Is that the uh, uh, Shriya's recommending it? The old one or the new one? That's what I'd like to know. I haven't oh, seen either. Scary, scary I stuff. I heard it was really, really scary stuff. Yeah. Philomena. Philomena. What's what's Philomena? It's a pixie it's, song. My grandmother's <laughs> name is Philomena because uh, she's very really? old. Yeah. Really? Call, mine, mine too. Oh, really? Oh, there it's you go. It's crazy. Wow. How crazy Something is that? Common. Do you call her <laughs> Phil? Because we call our gran, like we, we call her Phil, but even on official documents, like her name is Phil, even though <laughs> Phil. it's really <laughs> Philomena. Yeah, like people are like, like you're oh, not a man. Uh, and my, yeah. one of my aunties is also called Philomena and we call her Phil. Okay. Um, I guess it's also a film. <laughs> there, there we go. Okay. Dedicated to our grandmothers. Yeah. Colombo would also teach communication techniques. Yeah, for sure. Like and my partner says he learned how to do his job, which does involve kind of, in, in, interrogating people like mm -hmm. from watching episodes of Columbo so there you go like it can actually prepare you for your work even amazing okay oh Marianne's given us some more information about Philomena okay based on a book oh okay with some very famous actors famous British actors oh, okay. again. excellent awesome all right that sounds that sounds worth um checking out okay um all right, it's half past one. Um, <laughs> your, your voice is My voice is going, yeah. Well, I have to go and get some lunch and just get on with my weekend, as I'm sure everybody else has to. Um, yeah. So we're going to leave it there. Um, well, I hope everyone has all the links they, um, they got. If Yeah, link, hit the links now because uh, it's all about to disappear. I'm going to send you the slides, so okay. that will have links on them. So I'll double check before I send them to make sure we've got all the useful links. So thanks everybody. Thanks so everyone, thanks. Oksana's saying thanks, but yep, and Chrissy. Yeah, thanks so much everyone. This has been a complete success and really happy to have done this with you. Yeah, you're welcome everybody. Thanks so much sure. for coming above all. Thank you for taking some time out on your weekend to come and hang yeah. out with us yeah. and we had a really good time. So yeah, look out for the recording and the slides on email later on. And uh, yeah, hopefully we can do it again. Uh, another, yes, another time. Yes. All right. I think so. All right. Bye, Goodbye, everyone. everyone. Bye. Bye. -bye.